I'm going to be speaking about 3D ultrasound of the liver, when and where is it useful. As I contemplated this presentation several months ago, I looked at the title and realized that it would be easy to rearrange the words like this and retitle it 3D ultrasound of the liver, what is it good for? And if you channel Edwin Starr, you could come up with a phrase like this, absolutely nothing. But what I hope to convince you of in the next 15 minutes or so is that 3D ultrasound of the liver does have a future with a few caveats. I think when evaluating any new technology, it's interesting and instructive to assess how technologies enter the mainstream of imaging. So for example, CT was originated in the 1970s, MR in the 1980s, static ultrasound back in the 70s, real-time ultrasound came of age in the 80s, color ultrasound in the 90s, and now 3D ultrasound in the 2000s to 2010s. And subsequently, most of those technologies remain in the mainstream of imaging, except for, of course, static imaging, which has gone by the wayside. You'll notice that I show 3D ultrasound somewhat dimmer than the others, and that links back to the caveats that I mentioned earlier that I'll be talking about today. What are the keys to success for adoption of an imaging modality such that it enters the mainstream of imaging and becomes widely adopted and used? The first is that the technology has to be compelling. And compelling is more of an emotional state. It refers to the fact that the technology somehow grabs you. It's intriguing. It's exciting. And yes, those are all emotional rather than objective, but it's important. And it's important not just to the medical imaging community, it's also important to the public. Nowhere is this more evident than in 3D ultrasound in obstetric imaging. This is a Google image search from just a few days ago for 3D ultrasound. And this produced 1.74 million hits. All you see are babies, babies, and more babies, even though I didn't mention fetus or obstetrics or any related term. It's all about babies in 3D ultrasound, at least to the public. So there is a compelling element that applies not only to the medical community, but to the public at large. So there's demand for 3D and so-called 4D ultrasound amongst the public. And this is a website for a business that happens to be located near where I live in Mountain Brook, Alabama, that does 3D slash 4D imaging of pregnancies for a fee. This isn't medical diagnosis. It's responding to a desire from uh, pregnant women to see what their babies look like in utero. Again, it's very compelling to them, and this business and others have responded to that need. The second element is effectiveness. Any technology that we adopt has to be proven effective in one way or another. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One, of course, is anecdotal. Somebody who uses that technology is an early adopter, just tells you that it works well. But more importantly, new technologies have to be verified in the literature. And this is an example of just one article from the Journal of Ultrasound and Medicine in 2006, looking at two-dimensional imaging versus three- and four-dimensional imaging in OB. And as you can see from the summary statement at the bottom, they found that 3D slash 4D volume data uh, is consistent with 2D imaging. And there are many other articles like this. Another area I'll mention parenthetically where 3D ultrasound has a, had a great uh, impact is gynecologic imaging, as Dr. Beryl Benassaraf and others have shown in evaluation of the uterus. The next feature is that the technology has to be accessible. And accessibility is really about two different things. The first is cost. Cost, unlike the old days when it was important but not as important, you have to be able to show a return on investment in adopting any new technology or even upgrading an existing technology. And this is something we deal with day in and day out as we seek to keep our ultrasound equipment at UAB at the 
forefront of ultrasound imaging. It's not enough to say this is something we want, this is something we need. We have to show why we need it. The second is ease of use. And to me, ease of use all comes down to user interface design. I'll have more to say about both of these a little bit later in the talk. Now this may seem like a strange question to ask, but I'll ask it anyway because I can. I'm going to define what 3D ultrasound is. Because it's not always evident that 3D ultrasound is more than just volume imaging. So we always start off with acquisition of a volume data set, as shown diagrammatically here. We end up with a set of volume elements or voxels that make up a volume acquired by the ultrasound machine. Those voxels can then be processed in either of two ways. The most familiar, as I just mentioned, is volumetric imaging, where you end up with a shaded display showing various structures. In this case, as I rotate this volume around, we can see the aorta with a dissection flap and the superior mesenteric artery with a dissection flap as well with the liver in front. This is what most people think of when they think of 3D imaging. But the second aspect of 3D imaging, which is illustrated here on the right, is multiplanar imaging. And I believe that the latter is actually more useful in evaluating the liver than the former. So what are some of the uses of volumetric imaging in general? Well, the first thing we have to realize is that the bar is set really high, and that bar has been set primarily by CT. This is a surface shaded volume rendered display of the aorta and some of the abdominal organs and the underlying skeletal structures that's pretty much routine nowadays. This is from a CT angiogram. These used to be time consuming and difficult to produce, but these days, they're pretty much routine and easy to, to get. However, despite their easy availability, I have to say that diagnostically, I rarely rely on these images to decide whether the scan is normal or abnormal, or if there's an abnormality, what it is. What we'd really like to do, of course, in the abdomen is produce a liver that looks like a liver. And this is a uh, an image of the liver, a drawing of it that I got from a website that is actually called whereistheliverlocated.com. It's a real website, but I use that to show you what the picture is in everybody's mind of where they'd like 3D imaging of the liver to go. Now, the truth is that you can actually do this in CT. This image that I'm showing is a volume rendered image of the liver that was segmented automatically using some prototype Philips software that one of my colleagues and I were evaluating several years ago. And it looks pretty much like the liver drawing that I just showed you. In fact, this software was able to go beyond just rendering the liver volume and actually was able to segment out the hepatic vessels from the portal vessels, a useful thing that is now been incorporated into clinical workstations. Contrast that to this 3D rendered image of the liver from a three-dimensional ultrasound. It's definitely less compelling and doesn't look anywhere like the surface shaded display images that I just showed you. But as I just said, I don't think that there is really much use with rare exceptions for this type of display in liver sonography. The reason is illustrated again by the same set of images of babies and 3D ultrasounds of babies. The reason these look so good is that the babies are bathed in a natural fluid, amniotic fluid, that provides contrast between the soft tissue structures so you can get these beautifully rendered surface displays. That applies to some extent in the uterus as well. Even though there's no fluid around it, the reason we can see the endometrium well on 3D images of the uterus is that it stands out. It's more echogenic than the adjacent myometrium. The exception in the liver is cases such as this. This is a hepatic cyst, and as I move the volume around, you can see the inside of the cyst. However, I don't think these sort of images, although they're fun to look at, 
really provide much more diagnostic information than we already have from 2D images.